Hello everyone, it's Simone. I'm so glad you are here with me today for another up close and personal of this ink. It is Schreibtinte by Rohrer and Klingner. Rohrer und Klingner. The color is Altgoldgrün and the English, trans English translation for that word is Old Golden Green. But um, I have done a teeny tiny bit of research um, about the word and I don't think that old golden green is actually the real and right translation for this because uh, in German there is a word that has been coined by the uh, jeweling industry which is antique gold basically, Altgold um, and I think that that's the color that they're referring to um, however, I have not really found a, an implication that antique gold looks extremely different than any gold that you can buy right now, like modern gold. So I don't know if there is what the difference for that actually is. Um, I showed you earlier my setup. I am documenting inks in this um, A6 Hobonichi planner. It's from, I don't even know what year it is. I just use it as a book and the dates on the pages work as numbered pages, an index of sorts. Um, I have recently started to add bigger, longer writing samples to this ink journal. So now it consists, each entry consists of four pages. And um, so on the first two pages on the left side, there will be the writing sample. The right side will be an ink splotch, the name of the ink, an affirmation that I pick from an affirmation deck that I purchased on Amazon. Um, I saw that on Job's journal <laughs> YouTube and I loved them. Um, and then I do a, a water test. I do a little chromatography strip and that was the first thing that you saw me doing and then I usually put a strip on the bottom where I layer the ink um, three times so you have three different squares one is just one um, um, layer then the second box is the two layers and the third box is three layers and I just want to see how uh, heavy the ink is can be put on and if, if the color and the properties change. So this is the example where you can see the dilemma that I put myself into. So I'm fin going to finish this right page and then I realize mm, I cannot move on to the left side until the right side has dried up. Um, so I will be waiting or working on this for a while. Luckily, I'm able to cut or to stop recording while I'm waiting for things to dry. But when I am documenting my inks, I, I do this for fun. This is definitely not necessary. Um, you don't even have to document your inks. It's, this is for me is just pure enjoyment. I love seeing how inks perform on different papers. Um, how their subtle um, properties change, how the colors change, and that just makes me happy. And so that's why I do this. So I also um, make a coloring card swatch on the, you see them peeking out on the top left corner. And then I also do um, one of these Zubami ink cards. I don't know the paper. I probably will have to do some research to find out what special paper that is, but I do really love that paper of these Zubami ink cards. I purchased my set from Yoseka Stationery, but uh, I also saw them um, at Kinokuniya in the store that is closest to me that I sometimes go to. Definitely not frequent though, <laughs> I would be poor. Um, so yeah, so I am preparing uh, the, the layers of the ink right here. 
yes, it's probably redundant because you can see how thick or different the ink looks on the ink splotch. And you just saw my cat uh, on the right side coming in and trying to participate in this. She's right now curled up in my lap and um, very interested in my new microphone cable that is attached to my computer and my shirt. Uh, let me know if you like the quality of the voiceovers more with this microphone. Um, I just recently watched a YouTube video where someone recommended it and it was just, I, it was so uh, affordable that I ordered it to try it out and see if my video quality um, will be better after. Okay, so what is antique green, antique gold green or alt gold grün? It is an olive green. It definitely has um, a golden yellowish undertone and it is a beautiful shading ink. I have heard um, or read on several blogs that it is a dry ink. I have not experienced that so far because the only pens I have had this ink inside was a Twisby, I think. And it has really written well with that pen. I don't personally think that Twisbees are super dry. They're probably not gusher pens, but they're also not uh, very, very dry. And so um, I can't really make a determination whether this ink is dry or wet. Um, so Rohrer and Klingner is a German company from Leipzig. It was founded in 1892 and in the beginning they provided um, more supplies for etching and lithographic printing and later on they added um, inks for various different printing purposes as well as fountain pen inks. Their company, if you don't, if you're not familiar with German geography, um, Leipzig is in East Germany and Rohrer and Klingner has been a company in East Germany and it was able to um, survive the fall of the wall in 1989 and is still thriving and I, I looked at a map on their on their website where you can see that they um, are a company that is dis distributing their inks worldwide which I think I find uh, very interesting they're a really small company compared uh, to other companies so I think that's an amazing accomplishment so after the right side has dried, uh, I am transcribing a novel by Agatha Christie. It is the first in the Her Hercule Poirot series and the book is called Murder at the Styles, I think. I'm not even sure anymore. Um, and I am trying to use various different nib sizes to m compare um, how the ink looks with each different nib size, size. And this is the only nib. It's a Twisby Eco extra fine nib. It's a steel nib that I have in extra fine. And I have to say that definitely extra fine is not for me. It's not a width that I enjoy. I really love when you can see shading properties of inks and those just don't come out as much as with the broader nibs. Um, not necessarily broad nibs but medium nibs seem to be where I'm most comfortable with that I enjoy most at the moment. I say at the moment because I have found that these things actually change. I think I have talked very much about this ink. I don't want this to be a super extreme uh, out of the box 
review. I know there's other um, YouTubers on YouTube that do an amazing job of reviewing this in inks in a much more in-depth way. But what I love um, or what I love to do with these kinds of videos is talk about a question that I have picked up on some of the many podcasts that I'm listening to. Maybe I will do one of those um, about the podcasts, the fountain pen related podcasts that I'm listening to. But this question that I'm going to talk about right now was posed on the um, pencast from Goulet Pens. And they talked about in their what else is new <laughs> part where they talk about what they do in their private lives, uh, where they talked about three things that they would have done differently in life. Um, and I thought about that question and I, I, I thought it, this would be so interesting to answer that for myself. And so here I'm going to tell them to you right now, um, but maybe you want to think about this as well. Three things that now that you're looking back on however old you are right now, what would you have done differently? I have three, I have come up with three and I actually think they're pretty good. I would have loved to be, have been able to be susceptible to the advice at that specific time. Um, and then I have one for bonus one because uh, that's not something that I would have been able to influence. So the first one is that I would have loved to have taken more time to understand and find out or to understand what I love doing, also what I'm good at doing and to actually find out what I, what career I wanted to pursue uh, in my, in my life. So after high school, I went right on to university. In Germany, our high school diploma is more equivalent to a bachelor's degree in uh, the States. So we are in school for 12 years. Our um, high school, school diplomas, our exams are really quite tough. And we can go straight to university and start studying and specializing in one specific field. Uh, there is no general education courses um, because we already have the foundation to, to move on or that's what they imply, what they say. And so I just, I have been a high school exchange student in uh, after 10th grade and I was just wasn't curious about the world anymore. I thought, well, I'm just going to go do the next step, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I should have done more research and maybe taken more time instead of just finishing school in June or July and then going to university in October with a long vacation break in between. I should have maybe gotten a part-time job, uh, made, done an internship and f find out what is out, what careers are out there. Um, and then maybe I would have done, done, made some different choices. The second one is I should have finished my degree that I took up in at university when I started after high school, even if I realized along the way that it was the wrong one to pursue. Because having a degree, even if it's the wrong one, is better than not having one at all. And then the third one, <laughs> I should have finished university before I had uh, gotten kids. Um, I changed my, uh, what I was studying at university. So I spent a lot, a lot of time and years at university. And instead of doing that, I should have just stuck to the first one that I started, finished and then moved on and maybe changed course, uh, but I would have had something in my pocket um, because I, then I was so old uh, that I thought I would be able to handle having children and studying, which 
didn't work out and now I don't have anything, which it's okay. I have made my peace with this, but I think my life would have been much easier <laughs> and would have opened more doors career-wise than it has now. And then the fourth one, which is, I'm not close to the end of the video, which is good because that is one that I'm very passionate about. And that is not one that I can change how I would have viewed the world, but that is something that I can instill upon everyone out there is that um, I would have loved to be able to understood early on in my life and also be encouraged by teachers. Par my parents were very supportive. They never really judged my artistic skills, but by the world around me that art does not mean equalizes or equals being able to represent the world in realistic drawings. Art is much more, art is much deeper, art is um, putting feeling, bringing something onto paper that is more and deeper than realism. Realism is part of that. Some people can do that, but there is so many more media. There is so many more ways of expressing yourself through art than by being able to draw a bird, a horse, a person, a face, a nose, whatever. And um, I think maybe you, you are too, that that is something that is a lot of children are very enthusiastic about making art and then the world around them tells them that they are not an artist, that they're not good enough and then they stop enjoying that. And I would have loved to be able to still continue with the art and not uh, think that I'm not an artist, I'm not good at art, and that's why I shouldn't pursue it. So, I think I'm almost done. Um, I have finished this spread, almost. Um, the water test showed that this ink is not, there's not even like one bit of the pigment um, on the paper left. So, if you have a water accident, it's gonna be, <laughs> hard to decipher what was on the page. Uh, you can see the chromatography. There's lots of pinks and uh, blues in there. Um, and yeah, I'm really curious to compare this with the Robert Oster Tea Time that was an Endless Pens and exclusive and um, designed, is that what you say, by Micah Fines. I hope to be able to do that in the near future, maybe in July. And then uh, I would love to see what the exact differences of those, both of those inks are. Uh, they're def definitely very similar and I'd love to see and explore more. I'm showing you the final results, the different shades of green um, on all the different papers. And yeah, I would love to hear if you would, if you're inclined to share uh, because I know that these three things that you would have done differently in life are very personal and private. If you would love to comment, I'd love to read and respond. Um, but I also understand if you don't want to. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe subscribe, um, tell your friends, and I will see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>